Hello dear students, so today's topic uh, is about solution to underfitting and overfitting. We have already discussed what exactly is underfitting and what exactly is overfitting. So let's quickly uh, look into what is the solution for both of them. So the first solution is we are going to see is for underfitting. Frankly speaking, in real world, we hardly see any underfitting phenomenon occurring, which is uh, uh, the problem of underfitting can be solved by increasing the number of the layers and by also increasing the size of the intermediate dimension. But if we talk about modern deep neural network, we are having enough amount of deeper layers and sufficient amount of uh, model capacity uh, in that way there is no case of underfitting that you could see or in real time applications you would be over, mostly uh, you know uh, facing this overfitting phenomenon occurring and we would try to find out solution for it so if i talk on solution to overfitting there are different types first being data set division model design regularization dropout and data augmentation we are going to see them in detail so the first one that I'm going to talk about the solution to overfitting is about data set division. So we already know that our data set, we already know it is being into uh, classified into two subsets of training and testing, right? So we are going to actually introduce now a third type of data set that in order to select our hyper parameters of the model and also to detect the overfitting. So it is necessary to split our uh, original data, uh, training set data into three subsets, training set, test set, and there will be a third one, which is validation. So uh, we, for here to understand this, we have take, picked up a data set called MNIST data set. It is a handwritten digits data set where the digits are handwritten from zero to nine. Many such samples have been taken. So we are uh, taking this MNIST data set and 80% of it we are fixing it for training and 20% we will use it for testing. So we are calling DTrain as our training uh, data set which will be helping us to train model parameters and 20% we are going to use as DTest which is testing data set which will help you to test the generalization ability of this model, right? So if you can see this is our conventional uh, data set where it is divided only into two subsets training and test orange and blue okay this is just a simple scenario that i'm just trying to explain it with an example okay so when the size of the data set is small in order to test the general generalization ability of the model more accurately you can you know here and there can uh, increase your test set right whenever your data set is small that's a small note i want to give now the performance of the test set cannot be actually used as a feedback for model training okay we have to be able to uh, pick out more suitable hyper parameters of the model uh, while we are training our model in order to determine whether actually our model is overfitting or not so for that reason only test set is not sufficient only training set is not sufficient we are supposed to have another set which we call it as validation set so already we took as 80 20 training set was 80 and test set was 20 percent now inside the training set again we'll take out few samples and we will choose it as a validation set so now you can see the figure has been changed so you can see here uh, the orange is again training a part of it is will be validation and the remaining 20 you're talking as as it is your test data set so now this particular validation data set will be helpful to select the hyper parameters of this particular model okay now, what are these functions of validation data set? We are going to see why is it important. So, validation data set actually help you to adjust some of the hyper parameters like learning rate of the model. So, you all know learning rate plays a very crucial role in understanding, you know, when do you attain the minima of uh, learning, right? So, in order to adjust your speed, you are going to adjust your learning rate and weight decay coefficient, the time of training, etc., all of these things will be adjusted according to the performance of validation set. Second is you can readjust the network topology according to the performance of your validation data set. So you can see if your model is overfitting then you can change uh, the number of layers accordingly and you know in other words you can readjust your network topology. 
According to the performance of validation data set, you can actually determine whether your model is overfitted or underfitted. So, customary ratio of training set is to validation is to test set is actually 62 is to 20 is to 20. Okay, so that's our customary ratio. Now, what exactly is the difference between this test data set and validation data set? So, the algorithm designer can actually adjust the settings of various hyperparameters, like one of them being learning rate, as I just told. So, the algorithm designer can adjust the settings of various hyperparameters of the model according to the performance of the validation data set. In that case, this will help you to improve the generalization ability. But the performance of the test set can help you to understand what is generalization ability, but you cannot do anything to adjust your model with respect to the test and performance, okay? Only when you have got validation set, then only with respect to the result of the generalization ability of the model, with respect to validation, you can adjust the hyperparameters. So, that's the advantage. Now, next is, uh, you are going to see uh, early stopping or epoch, okay? So, you you all know that you know one batch of updating in the training set one step and iterating through all the samples in the training set is called as an epoch correct now it is generally recommended to perform a validation operation after several epochs else it is going to introduce additional computation cost so you have to see to it that you cannot even have so many number of epochs also so now you can see here if the training error of the model is low and the training accuracy is high, correct? That is a good thing. But if the validation error is high and the validation accuracy is low, then definitely this model is overfit, correct? Now on the other hand, if there are errors on uh, the training data set and validation data set, both of them are high and the accuracy is low, then definitely your model is going to be underfitted, correct? So, you already know the definitions of overfitting and underfitting. The same I am applying here. Okay. Now, uh, this is a typical example. Uh, I am sorry for the missed uh, this some problem. So, uh, this is a typical classification problem wherein the training process diagram I am just sharing here. So, in the later stages of the training that you can see, even if then there is, you know, you have got, I mean, uh, you have got the same network. Okay. You have not changed the network topology. But also, due to the change in the actual capacity of the model, you can see here the overfitting is appearing, correct? So, you can see there is the error is increasing and accuracy is decreasing. So, why is this happening? It is because you have increased a lot of, you know, you have increased the amount of epochs. So, you can see that even though you are not changed the network structure, there has been an overfitting condition. So, that is important. You have to choose the number of epochs also for a properly fitted model. So, you can see here, if I take this particular example and after this only the accuracy starts decreasing. So, this is an ideal case. So, at this point, I can say that this is an early stopping epoch. At this point, if I can say that I can hold the number of epochs, then I get a perfectly fitted model. So, in this way, you know, uh, the number of epochs that you are setting also play an important role whether the model is overfitted. So, that is the second note for you. This means that for neural networks, even the network hyperparameters amount remains unchanged, wherein I am not doing anything with respect to the maximum capacity of the network, but still the model can be overfitted because the effective capacity of the neural network is closely related to the state of the network parameters. So, as the number of training epochs were increased, you could see that overfitting became very serious. So, what we can observe here is, if you can early stop the epoch as the vertical dotted line I just showed, then that is the best fit model, that is the best state of the network and there is no overfitting over there and also you, the model is going to give you a better generalization ability. So, uh, you know, early stopping epoch, when it is found that the validation accuracy has not decreased for a successful number of epochs, you can predict that most suitable epoch may have been reached. So, you can stop training. Okay. So, that is one point that I am giving you. Okay. Where you should stop training a particular model. Hmm. So, I think uh, this is uh, the first solution towards overfitting. We are going to see the next one uh, more in detail in our later class.